So I finally updated my drone to the new DJI Mini 3 Pro. The drone comes, I'm testing it out, I'm going to make a review of the Mini 3 Pro, and everything's going to be fantastic. And then I realized that in order to put my video up on YouTube, I'm going to need a license. I'm going to need a pilot's license that's going to cost me $175 to take the exam. And if I don't pass the exam, I'm going to have to pay another $175 to take it, plus suffer the humiliation of failing a test, something that I don't ever recall doing in my life. But I can hear someone saying, Mark, the DJI Mini 3 Pro, you don't need a license to fly that because it's under 250 grams. Well, you're correct. You don't need a license to fly it. You just will need a license if you intend to use it in any commercial purpose. And the FAA has deemed YouTube a commercial purpose. And while this isn't legal advice, I can see five other advantages to getting a drone pilot's license. Perhaps most important is that a licensed pilot can fly in places that a commercial pilot simply cannot. Now, with or without a license, you can use the Before You Fly app and uh, apply for automatic waivers to fly your drone in certain areas. But I'm told that with a license, you can get into some areas that you could not get in otherwise. Number two, a licensed pilot can make a request to fly higher in some areas. And those options are often not available to a recreational pilot. Number three is a big one. Night flying is only available to commercial pilots. Now, typically you're going to need a light on your drone that can be seen three miles away, but you can also apply a waiver to get rid of those. Number four is a big one. The ability to fly over people or moving vehicles is reserved to commercial pilots. And finally, number five, a recreational pilot can only fly 400 feet above ground level. And that's it. But a commercial pilot can fly 400 feet over ground level, but also over any buildings, sort of a bubble around the building of 400 feet. And that's something that they can do without seeking permission in uncontrolled space. So I figured, well, I'll get the manual, I'll read through it a couple times, and go take the test. And then yesterday, as I'm preparing for today's test, I realized this is a hard test. I watched the entire Tony Northrup video twice. Thank you, Tony. Very good job. And I took a practice exam and passed by the skin of my teeth. The test starts in one hour. And I'm going to go down and see if I can get 70% of those questions right. So if you're watching this, you might be thinking, well, of course he passed because otherwise he wouldn't show us this video. But the storyteller that I am, maybe I will show this. Maybe I'll show my lots of confidence because when you watch a movie and the person goes in knowing that he's going to pass the exam, for example, and has a lot of swagger and confidence about it, invariably you know that he is not going to pass. And then he's going to have to suffer humiliation and failure and then rise again at the end of the show. And maybe this will be that kind of video. Who am I kidding? I don't want to fail. So I'm going to spend the next half hour trying to cram in whatever information I can to get me over that 70%. And I'll see you back in a little bit. Okay, welcome back. Well, um, that was an intense hour and 45 minutes. Very, very painful. Uh, I guessed on a lot of the questions, but I would just like to say that from now on in the comments, if you would just refer to me as Airman Arnett, I would appreciate that. Thank you. This is your captain speaking. As a pilot who got 83% on his Part 107 exam, I was able to make a real-world review of the DJI Mini 3 Pro, where I discussed some real-world issues that you won't find in any spec sheets. We know you have a choice of YouTube channels. Thank you for clicking on this next link. Flight attendants, prepare doors for arrival.